The Dragon and the Grandmother. Once, in a faraway land, lived a fire-breathing dragon, and his human grandmother. One day, the dragon came upon three soldiers. Why are you hiding in the fields? He asked. We are escaping the battle, they said. If we are found, we will be killed. The dragon had an idea. I will take you to town to safety, and give you all you need, he said. But only if you stay there and serve me for seven years. At the end of those years, if you can answer a riddle, I will set you free. But if you're wrong, you will be my dinner. We have no choice," said the soldiers. "You're our only hope." The dragon handed each soldier a golden stick. "Wave the stick," he said, "and you will have whatever you need." The three soldiers waved their golden sticks. Piles of money appeared before them. They bought grand clothes, newer horses, and feasted on the best of foods. The dragon gave them many tasks throughout the years. The most important was telling him when travelers passed through town alone. He wanted to thank them for visiting. Not one traveler was ever seen again. After seven years, the dragon called the soldiers together. In one week, I will ask you my question. If you get it wrong, you will be my for life. Two of the soldiers laughed. How hard can his question be? But the third soldier was sore afraid. He ran deep into the forest to think about what he could do to be set free. In the forest, the soldier came upon a small hut. Inside lived a tiny grandmother baking pies. "What is wrong?" asked the grandmother. You look like you're carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders. The soldier told the grandmother the story of the dragon. "You're in luck," said the grandmother. "The dragon is my grandson. He tells me everything. Hide in the cellar. When he comes for supper, I will ask him the answer to the riddle." Listen to all he says. The night, the dragon bounded through the door for his evening meal. How was your day, dear? Asked the grandmother. Grand, said the dragon. In a few days, I will trick my three soldiers so they can never go free. They will never guess the answer to my riddle. Oh," said the grandmother. "What will you be asking them? I'd love to hear how clever my dear dragon is." The dragon smiled. "What goes on four legs in the morning, two legs at noon, and three legs in the evening?" "That is a tough riddle, my dear sneaky dragon. Please tell me the answer." A person," growled the dragon. "He crawls on all fours as a baby, walks on two legs as an adult, and walks with two legs and a cane in old age." The next morning, the grandmother fed the soldier a big breakfast. "Now you know the answer," she said. "Quick, run." And tell your soldier friends. The soldier raced into town, but before he could tell his friends the answer, the dragon had already found them.
The dragon asked the soldiers the riddle he told his grandmother. The first soldier trembled in fear. I don't know, he cried. And as he ran away, the dragon grabbed him and gobbled him up. The same fate fell on the second soldier. So, laughed the dragon at the third soldier. Do you think you are smarter than your friends? Hmm, said the soldier. Could the answer be a person? How did you know? Growled the dragon. It is not possible. His anger burned so hard he burst into flames. And the soldier, he lived. Happily ever after, baking pies in a small hut in the forest. Cinderella and the Vampire. It was a dark and stormy night. At least, that's how most scary stories start. And this is one of the scariest. Deep. In the forest lived a girl named Ella. Each night she would rub cinders or ashes from her fireplace on her arms and legs to hide in the dark. Then she would sneak out for adventure. People began calling the girl Cinder Ella. They would spot her in the night. Climbing trees, shouting at the moon, and playing with forest animals. During the day, Cinderella lived with her evil stepmother and two mean and overly clean stepsisters. Cinderella longed for the day she could leave. She only felt happy when it was dark. But nobody understood her love of the night. One day, a golden envelope was slipped under her door. It contained an invitation to a ball at a nearby castle. The prince was looking for a princess. Cinderella had never wanted to marry a prince, but she so wanted to escape her mean stepmother. And stepsisters, so she thought. Hmm, maybe I should go. But there was a problem. Unlike her stepsisters, Cinderella had nothing to wear to Prince Ball, and unlike her stepsisters, she had no way to get there. Cinderella sat in the tree, and felt sorry for herself. Just then, Cinderella's fairy godfather appeared. Her sweet and gentle fairy godmother was away on vacation. It had been a stressful year watching over Cinderella. Her fairy godfather was not so kind or trustworthy. What will I wear? Asked Cinderella. Her fairy godfather waved his magic wand and laughed. Cinderella looked down. She was wearing a puffy dress with shiny red designs all over it. Her black sneakers stuck out from underneath. And how will I get to the ball? Asked Cinderella. Instead of a pumpkin. I will use this blood red tomato," laughed her fairy godfather. "The prince will love it." The night of the ball arrived. Cinderella climbed out her bedroom window and hopped into the tomato carriage. When she arrived at Prince's castle, everyone stared, especially the prince. Who is this beautiful girl? Whispered the guests. Ghosts, mummies, 
zombies, girls, and all sorts of spooky creatures. What great costumes! Thought Cinderella, but these weren't costumes. A band of witches began to play music. The prince strutted over to Cinderella and asked for the first dance. They twirled and spun and waltzed around the dance floor. Thank you, said the prince. Then he danced with Cinderella's stepsisters and the other girls. The hands of the clock raced around in dizzying speed until it was almost midnight. It is time," announced the prince. "I must choose my princess." The prince carefully took one last sniff of each girl. The stepsisters smelled like roses. Other girls smelled like cinnamon. An apple pie. Then he sniffed Cinderella. I pick you, he said. My nose never lies. You will have the tastiest blood. Cinderella shrieked. He's a vampire, and she bolted out of the castle as the clock stopped on midnight. One of her black sneakers fell off on the steep castle stairs. The prince grabbed her sneaker and chased after her. That blood, he yelled, that delicious, juicy blood! Please don't leave me. I will make you my princess of the night. Cinderella stopped in her tracks. Princess of the night. Just then, Cinderella realized a vampire prince might not be so bad after all. So she married him, and the two ruled the night happily ever after. The end. The Snake Prince's Secret. Once. In a faraway land, lived a farmer and his three daughters. The two oldest daughters were greedy and selfish. The youngest daughter was beautiful and kind. The farmer loved her the most. One day, the farmer prepared to travel far away. To sell his goods, I will be gone a long time," he said to his daughters. "Is there anything I can bring back for you?" "We want jewels," said the two oldest daughters. "The shiniest and most beautiful in the land, nothing less." "And for you?" asked the farmer to his youngest daughter. I only asked for a small red flower, Papa," she whispered. Then she drew a picture of the flower, and tucked it into the farmer's coat pocket. The farmer searched high and low for all that his daughters desired. He found the most beautiful rings and necklaces for his oldest daughters. But he could not find the red flower for his youngest. Sadly, the farmer began his trip home. On his way, he spotted an old castle on a hill. In front was a field of the most beautiful red flowers he had ever seen. He took out the picture his daughter had drawn. The flowers matched. The farmer raced into the field to pick one for his daughter, and as he plucked the flower, the farmer heard a violent hissing. He raced back to his horse, but at the edge of the field appeared a giant snake. 
its red eyes stared into Farmer's face, and it curled around his body. Super, the snake hissed. Please don't eat me! Cried the farmer. I have three beautiful daughters who need me. I am all they have. Daughters, asked the snake. I am prince of this castle. I will spare your life if you give me one of your daughters to be my wife. The terrified farmer agreed. If you don't send me one of your daughters in the week, growled the snake, I will come and eat you. We won't marry a snake, shouted the eldest daughters as they grabbed their rings and necklaces. Then in a week I will die, my daughters, said the farmer. Papa. Whispered the youngest daughter, "I will marry the snake prince, and save your life." The farmer cried as he led his youngest and most loved daughter to the snake's castle. The snake prince grew to love the youngest daughter. He brought many gifts to the castle to try to make her happy. The finest necklaces and rings, the most beautiful dresses, but all she wanted was to see her papa again. One day, the daughter asked to visit him. "Be back by sunset," warned the snake prince, "or else." "I will," she promised, but she had no idea. How much this promise meant to him. Years earlier, the prince had been cursed by a fairy, and turned into the hideous snake. To break the curse, he had to find true love. The snake prince knew he could be sure he had found true love if the daughter kept her promise to return by sunset. The youngest daughter raced home to see her papa. When the two oldest daughters saw her beautiful dress and jewelry, they filled with jealousy. Why didn't we marry that snake? They scowled, so they came up with the plan to trick their sister. The two rubbed. Onions on their eyes to make them cry. Please stay the night with us, dear sister. They begged. Papa wants you too, and surely the snake prince will do you no harm. He loves you. But secretly, they hoped the snake prince would kill their sister. Then one of them. Could marry the snake prince and get all his riches. The youngest daughter couldn't bear to see her sister sad, so she agreed to spend the night. I hope the prince won't be too upset, she said. But when she returned to the castle the next day. She found a long snake's skin beside a man lying on the floor. It was the snake prince, dead, of a broken heart. She took the snake's skin, and made necklaces for her selfish sisters. And when they put them on, the sisters fell to the ground. Slithering like snakes, for the rest of their lives. The end. Rapunzel and the Werewolf. Never make a witch angry. Everyone knows that. But sometimes, p.
people forget. Once, long ago, a simple farmer and his wife lived in a hut. A large garden grew behind their home. It was filled with Rapunzel, the most beloved plant in all the land. The Rapunzel had beautiful purple flowers and tasty leaves. Its roots were perfect for cooking. However, the garden and all the Rapunzel belonged to an, an evil witch. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, please get me some of that Rapunzel," begged the farmer's wife. She longed for it so badly, she fell gravely ill. The farmer feared his wife would die. So that night, the farmer snuck into the garden and stole some. Then he made his wife a salad with the tasty leaves. Soon, the farmer's wife felt like new again. But the next week, the farmer's wife wanted more. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, please get me some of that Rapunzel," she begged. The farmer, wanting to keep his wife happy, snuck back into the garden. Quickly, he grabbed a handful of Rapunzel and ran. But, as he dashed out, the evil witch appeared. "How dare you steal my Rapunzel!" she scowled. "You must pay with your life." "Oh no!" cried the farmer. "Please spare me." I only wanted to help my wife. I will let you live," said the witch. "Only if you give me your firstborn child." The farmer promised. The farmer did not tell his wife about the promise to the witch, and over time he forgot about it. Many years later. The farmer and his wife had a beautiful baby girl. They were filled with joy. But the next day, the witch swooped in. This child is mine! She screeched. No! Screamed the wife. Your husband promised me. Hissed the witch. And fled with the child. The witch locked the baby girl in a tall tower. "I'll call you Rapunzel," she said. "No one will take you from me, my dear." Years passed, and Rapunzel grew. So did her beautiful dark hair. It grew longer and thicker than. Any hair in the land. Whenever the witch wanted to climb into the tower, she would yell, "Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair!" Rapunzel felt like a prisoner alone in her small tower. More than anything else, she wanted a friend. Rapunzel sat by the window day by day. And sing about her sadness. One day, a prince wandered into the forest. He heard Rapunzel's song. He fell in love with her beautiful voice. The prince asked Rapunzel to let down her hair, so he could meet her. Quickly, the two fell in love. Whenever the witch was away. The prince snuck into the forest to visit Rapunzel. He dreamed of taking her away with him. One day, the witch returned early, and caught them together. She flew into a violent rage. 
You can't have Rapunzel. She screamed. No one can. The witch put an evil curse on the prince. Then she hacked off Rapunzel's hair and dragged her into the forest to die. The prince searched night and day, high and low, for Rapunzel. He finally found her huddled in a cave, near death. I will take care of you forever, he said. You will be my princess. On the night of their grand wedding, a full moon appeared from behind the night clouds. As soon as the moon's light shined on the prince, the witch's curse. Came true. The prince turned into a werewolf with golden hair. Terrified of him, Rapunzel fled to a high tower in the palace. She locked herself inside. The prince stood at the foot of the tower, howling, "Rapunzel, my love, let down your hair." Rapunzel. Was too afraid. The prince returned, night after night, howling up at his great love. The howls sent pangs of sadness through Rapunzel's heart, until the night she spotted her prince dead at the foot of the tower. And if you listen closely, you can hear the wind. Whisper, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. But is always followed by the spine-tingling screech of an angry witch. The end. Thank you for listening, boys and girls. This is from your story fairies. Have a good night.